when should someone expect or when should someone ideally reach out to someone like yourself, right? I mean, if, if I'm not for sure right now that I want to do it the first sales trust, I'm thinking about it maybe, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a sale, you know, should I reach out to you, you know, two months in the head or, or like right when, whenever I have a contract, when's the ideal time? We think the best time is now, meaning if you, if you want to create and preserve more wealth and create what's called a tax deferred wealth plan, right? Um, ideally you're, you're exploring all of these tax deferral strategies before you're in the emotion of selling a property and you got 21 days to close and there's all this stuff moving. You just want to be clear minded and you want to bring in your trusted professionals and, you know, ask all the tough questions and really Understand it. Get educated. We we'll want to educate you and, and, and really grasp it so you feel empowered by it. And that's really our goal. Our goal is just the guide, right? We're just going to guide you along the way. We're going to guide you uh, through our deals and we're going to educate you. And then you're going to bring in your trusted advisors to get their 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 blessing, right? Boom. And now you have it. Just like the 1031. Imagine 25 years ago, Juan, you didn't know about the 1031. And then all of a sudden you learn about it, right? And then you get empowered by it. How much that helped you to grow your wealth, right? And have strategies. So and I'll touch on two, two of those too, by the way. Part of what you'll learn in the education is how to get a brand new depreciation schedule. Okay. So with the 1031 exchange, you don't have a brand new depreciation schedule. In fact, your depreciation schedule travels. So we'll walk through an example one. Imagine you own a $10 million multifamily property for the last 27 and a half years. Okay. And imagine you took all the depreciation. So you have zero depreciation. Okay. Well, if you sell and buy another property worth 10 million, Guess what? You have still have a zero depreciation schedule. But if you sell and and buy that same property after you sold you put the funds into the trust and bought that property, you get a brand new ten million dollar depreciation schedule. So that's really powerful. So as soon as you understand that, and as soon as you execute this strategy, you could buy about the same property you would have bought with the ten thirty one. You just buy it through the trust. All of a sudden, you know, those fees are just go out the window because you've just saved maybe hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on, on, on income tax, right? Because you've been offset it with the depreciation. You can also do accelerated depreciation on that new deal. And the second one is the estate tax. Okay. So if any ultra high net worth individuals are listening to this, to this podcast, understand that, that the estate tax has nothing to do with capital gains tax. Okay. So a lot of people have this misconception that I can just own real estate 1031, 1031 die. Get a stepped up basis and I walk away tax free. It's true you can walk away capital gains tax free, and by you, it's really your kids, right? Or your heirs. They can walk away capital gains tax free, but it has nothing to do with the estate tax, okay? So the estate tax is anything above and beyond the exclusion amount. So 22 million if you're married and 11 million if you're single. So let's imagine, Juan, you're worth $52 million. So imagine all of it's inside your taxable estate. You die, you get a stepped up basis for the 52, your kids do, but that other 30 million, the 52 minus the 22, which is 30, is going to be hit with a 40% death tax. That's painful, right? That is very painful, yes. So the intent is to get it outside the taxable estate. The challenge is the 1031 doesn't do that. Now, most people do these gifting, and they, but they run out of gifting and they just, they don't run out, they run out of time. They can't, they can't get it out fast enough. The solution is to get it out all in one day and one transaction by selling, let's say that was a $30 million apartment complex and moving into the deferred sales trust and also moving it outside the taxable estate one day, one transaction. And you just saved your estate on $12 million, which is 40% of that 30 million. So those are, those are the reasons why we want to have this tax deferred wealth plan created. We want to essentially, uh, take a, take a snapshot of everything you have going on and, and chart out the course of it. And one course is just stay with the 1031 and keep doing that. Or one course is go with the deferred sales trust. And then we start doing the ROI for all of the benefits on this side. And we do the ROI for this side and you match it up and you decide what you want to do. But we think as soon as you get empowered with this, it'll change the way you sell and buy real estate forever. Also, by the way, remember it works for businesses. 1031 doesn't work for businesses. It works for, uh, we work for, works for Bitcoin. It works for high end primary homes. The 1031 doesn't work for those things. It works for private and public stock. It's also a seamless partnership separation. So we want to touch on the syndicators out there who are listening. Right now, as a syndication, most, most of the syndicators we work with are operators. They don't allow 1031 into their, into their deals. I mean, they might carve out a TIC tenant in common for some, but most of the time, it's just too complicated. They also don't 1031 out of their deals, meaning they, everyone brings in 
pays their tax, pays their tax, comes in with the money, and then they sell this big profit. Everyone pays their tax and they bring it to the next deal. Well, guess what? The deferred sales trust is great because the whole entity doesn't have to move. We could have, let's say, 10 investors, one, and all 10 could have their own individual deferred sales trust. And we're saving that 30 to 50%. Okay. Now follow me here. Some of them may not want to do it for sales trust, which is fine. Let's say five don't want to do it. They just pay their tax. The other five can. We don't have to follow the rules of the whole entity moving like the 1031. So we have a seamless partnership separation. And again, it also works for carried interest, which is capital gains tax, right? Uh, if you didn't know that. And so this, ha- this empowers the operator to not only attract more wealth because someone might si- sell a high end primary home or sell a business or sell Bitcoin or sell something and then put it into the trust and now they can invest into your syndication and it also empowers the syndicator on the way out to give more of their investors a better return on their money because we're saving that 30 to 50 percent so i'll pause there i said a whole lot make sure you caught all that you have just listened to another information-packed episode of capital gains tax solutions with brett swartz we hope you enjoyed today's show and found it helpful Visit CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com to access the show notes and to access more resources. Don't forget to leave a review and join us again next time.